So today's focus is actually going to be on the lead wrist and we're going to be looking at the top of the backswing and the start of the downswing. Do we need that flat lead wrist at the top or can we actually make this shallowing movement at the start of the downswing? We do have two options. I'm going to share with you both. The aim of the game is all about squaring that club face. If we can get that club face pointing at our intended target, we are going to play some pretty good golf, right? So to help with the understanding of the lead wrist positions, I am going to be utilizing today hack motion, which is an amazing wrist sensor that's going to give us, it's going to tell me a ton of info. It's going to tell us is our wrist in extension or is it in flexion? It actually does measure up and down as well. So cocking and uncocking. So that last golf swing I just made, at the top of my golf swing, my wrist was 12 degrees plus 12 degrees. So in extension, so a little bit cupped, but not much. And I would say the average on tour is a little bit that way. There are some great extreme golfers, more in this pattern, like a Dustin Johnson, a Colin Morikawa, John Rahm, who have a lot of flexion in their lead wrist and almost maintain at the start of the downswing and then let it go more at impact. The average is slightly cupped like me, so a little bit of extension, but they change wrist angles in the downswing. What I did quite well is by the time I got to impact, I was minus one, so I still had, I actually managed to get my hand from a little bit of extension to a little bit of flexion by the time I hit the golf ball. Now, why is this important? Well, it really manages that club face position. What I see the majority of golfers struggling with is an open club face. So where in the downswing at this last parallel position, P6 here, we tend to see the toe straight up or the club face pointing more up towards the sky. Now from there, the likelihood is that right-handed golfer is gonna miss it out to the right of the target. They're gonna be pushing it, fading it, slicing it. So knowing what wrist angle is correct for you does depend on a few factors and obviously base everything on the ball flight, whether the ball's staying left or right, which way it's curving. You know, there's so many influences out there, whether we've got a stronger grip, whether we've got a weaker grip, whether we're actually having our hands a little bit more forwards at impact, we've got to piece together our golf swing to give us the best outcome, the best ball flight possible. There are some great golfers who uh, this go a little bit like I was here. So I'm looking at my iPad at the same time. So that is my lead wrist, about four or five degrees cupped, if you like. So in a little bit of extension. Now there's some great golfers there, but what they do at the start of the downswing is they get the feeling like their knuckles move a little bit behind the wrist. And now, I mean, that's really exaggerated. I'm minus 33 degrees. So I've gone a lot way into flexion of that lead wrist. As I come down into impact, the benefit of having the lead wrist in some form of flexion is I can get that club face a little bit more turned down, more matching my spine angle. Now the only one little bit I want to add to that is I work with golfers where we work on their wrist angles and we go, well, they're really getting there, but we still see the face open. And we see the face open because they've done this. They've stood up out of posture. So it's important when we talk about the downswing movement with the wrist angles, we don't forget to maintain this tilt forwards from our hips, our forward bend, if you like. We cannot do it from here. So I could get great wrist angles, but if I stand up out of posture, I'm still gonna get that club face open. So we've gotta do it in posture here. And that's a great position to start to manage my club face into impact. And there are some great golfers, like a Dustin Johnson, um, John Rahm, Colin Morikawa, who are more in flexion at the top and hold that position at the start of the downswing so they don't change wrist angles. Now, DJ's, I think, as extreme as it gets. So he gets it to around minus 40, which I'm even struggling, especially if I do it in posture, right? He is, what's that? That's minus 27. And I'm not sure, oh, there we go, minus 33. I can't really do it more than that. It feels like my right hand's coming off the club. So he's about as extreme as it gets, okay, on the downswing, at the top of the backswing, sorry. And he just holds that position a little longer at the start of the downswing movement. Now his wrist is actually going from flexion to extension through impact. Whereas mine was doing the opposite there. I was a little bit, in extension and I moved towards flexion at the start of the downswing. Let me show you what both look like if I can. 
So, I'm going to try and go fully DJ-esque. Now, I'm not sure I can get anywhere near that. Let's just see if I can get it minus at the top. Anywhere minus would be good. Okay, I'm really going to feel it. And I'm expecting, it felt like I was going to go a long way left. <laughs> I got zero. I got zero at the top and zero impact. And God, that felt a lot to me. But this might work for you. The guys who are more this way and holding it, they're going to have very good rotation of their body through impact here. So they're going to really go extreme. They're going to hold that angle and rotate very well. And they can create a little bit more shaft lean, having their hands a little bit more forwards, helping that quality of strike. As I said, the majority of elite golfers are neutral-ish, slightly this way at the top of the golf swings. There I'm at about plus eight. And what they do in the downswing is they change. They have this shallowing movement. You can see as my knuckles drop behind the wrist, the club starts to drop behind me. Now, it doesn't matter, and we're focusing on lead wrist here, but I could feel this in my trail wrist, couldn't I? I could feel like I got my palm pointing a little bit more up, more like a waiter position here at the start of the downswing, or I could even focus on the club, feel like it drops a little bit more behind me to help me get into minus, and again, start to manage that golf club. So on this one, I'm gonna just try and feel like I really do it as much as possible early in the downswing. And again, same sort of ball flight here. You can see I'm not quite getting used to then rotating through. Now I got minus seven at impact, so that's pretty good going. I was plus eight at the top minus seven at impact. So again, my wrist definitely moving this way at some point during the downswing to achieve that through impact. The ideal with an iron at impact is to be minus. With a driver, we'd definitely take a little bit more or closer to zero. We wouldn't expect the player to have their wrist quite as much this way in flexion by the time they get to the golf ball, partly because the ball's gone more forwards in their stance. Ultimately, it doesn't matter which you are. Are you someone who's gonna try and feel a lot at the top of the backswing and maintain? Or are you gonna try and make that movement early in your downswing in that transition movement? I will leave it up to you. But I just wanted to share there are two options. What we see the majority of golfers struggle with is they do this, okay? So they get the opposite movement here and you can see I'm moving into big plus figure and it looks like my knuckles are a long way ahead of my wrist. The club face gets open. Now often golfers do that because they're pulling the handle down, the shaft gets very steep, the wrist really gets into that cut position where my knuckles have gone forwards and the face is very open. I see a lot of golfers around here and they're really having to use a lot of hands and arms for impact and that is very, very difficult to control. Let me go ahead and hit one without overthinking it. See if I can finish with one pepper in that pin. I'm just aiming for a neutral top of the back swing position and that, hopefully that feeling of a little shallowing movement. Oh, that felt solid, but it's just leaking a touch out to the right of the target there, finishing in that right hand bunker. What could you do with a drill to improve those wrist angles? I would recommend a hanger, a coat hanger. Now, the idea is that the bottom rung is gonna sit up somewhere between my forearms, my left and my right forearm. Now in the back swing, what I wanna try and get is this touching my lead arm. And in the start of the downswing, almost feel like it's digging more into it. So really getting that sensation. And again, looking at the numbers there, that's around minus 30 in the downswing. So my knuckles are way behind my wrist. As long as I maintain my spine angle, I'm into that great delivery position. I could obviously do that with a golf club. Just incorporate it into grip as best you can. I don't expect it to be perfect. We'll get that same sensation. I would encourage you, 
as best you can to look at the cod face position on video here if you've got a good enough camera and obviously be a lot dictated by the ball flight. If your miss for a right-handed golfer is too much to the right of the target, the likelihood is we've got to try and feel that our wrist goes more into flexion. If your big miss is already left, you may not worry about this as much. However, often the golfer who's got that face open and manipulating can hit it that way. So getting that club face in a stronger position with that wrist a little bit more in flexion, it teaches the golfers to start to rotate their body a little bit quicker through the golf ball. Why is that important? Huge, huge power source. I hope this video has given you some food for thought and really helped you understand your wrist angles in the backswing and in the downswing. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. Right now, YouTube are suggesting the next video of mine that's relevant to you. The link's just here. Click on it and check it out.